Yo guys, what's going on? My name is Ryan and welcome back to a brand new video on HFSGP News where today we're going through our top 10 moments of 2018 from British Superbikes. Now there was so many moments that uh, we just couldn't fit in this video. So shout out to obviously Leon Haslam winning his first title uh, since the Scooter Championship way back in the day. And also just that whole weekend at Silverstone in general because that was absolutely incredible. But without further ado, let's get straight in to our top 10 moments of the British Superbike 2018 season. So our first moment of this video comes from Donington Park right at the start of the season where Bradley Ray uh, did the double in very tricky conditions at Donington Park. It was mixed conditions, it was cold, it was wet all weekend. Uh, they moved the race forward, uh, normally they do two races on Sunday but they moved one forward on Saturday due to that bad weather conditions on Sunday. Uh, they didn't actually want uh, a bit of a MotoGP Silverstone uh, to happen but obviously that was before so that would have been uh, quite ironic uh, but uh, luckily we got two races underway and Bradley Ray he, he, he just dominated it he dominated both of the races he picked the right tyre and he just rode around the conditions and that's why uh, you know champions are made because they're able to adapt easily uh, to the conditions around them and that's what Bradley Ray did and he proved himself there as a 2018 championship uh, protagonist or maybe even a championship favourite uh, we did the video uh, earlier on in the year is Bradley Ray a new championship challenger and uh, you guys seem to agree but unfortunately things didn't work out as we'll uh, talk about a little bit later on in the video is that uh, is another top 10 moment is a little comeback towards the end of the season so uh, yeah Bradley Ray's Donington double tricky conditions dominated the races and put himself in a hot spot to win the 2018 championship our next moment comes from Andy Irwin who was drafted in uh, last minute to replace Shaky Byrne who unfortunately had uh, that really serious accident at Snetterton uh, a few weeks prior to the race at Snetterton uh, where unfortunately ruled Shaky out of the rest of the 2018 season. So Paul Bird decided to bring in Andy Irwin to partner up with his brother Glenn Irwin at the uh, BYZ Ducati Paul Bird Motorsport team. Uh, and well, it was a good weekend. He, he turned up in FP1 and he was competitive right from practice one. He was inside that top 15, which obviously, you know, his points. Uh, in motorcycle racing, he was in, floating inside the top 15 all weekend. He qualified in 12th. Uh, Bit of a, a blip in race one after uh, going into turn two on the first lap. He brought down uh, both of the Honda riders. So uh, Andy Irwin uh, obviously brought down uh, Jason Haller and Dan Linfoot. And then also the Tyco BMW of Michael Laverty in race one. Uh, unfortunately, that's where Andy Irwin's debut ended. But it's more the second race, which is why he's, uh, he's in the top ten moments. Because he started from last position on the grid. Because obviously, uh, if you don't know BSB, they start on... Um, the race one lap time. So if you set the first fastest lap time in race one, if you set the fastest lap, you start on pole. If you set the seventh fastest lap time in race one, you start from seventh, etc., etc. Uh, and Andy Irwin obviously penalised for that accident, didn't set a lap time, so started last, uh, and he rode from last to tenth in the uh, second race. So that is why he uh, is part of our top ten, uh, just because he was absolutely incredible throughout the weekend. Uh, race one, that hiccup, but race two, and again, just a very good ride. Uh, and it shows as well his talent from going from a world super sport bike to a BSB bike with no electronics and anything like that around small quirky circuits. Uh, Andy Owen took to it like a duck on water. For our next moment, we go up across the border and into Scotland, up to Fife, where Knock Hill Circuit is based. And, well, that's where we finally saw the real Danny Buchan, the super stock champion from 2017. And he finally showed his class on a uh, super bike bike, scoring that double podium, uh, fighting in the races. He was le he led the race for a bit. He fought uh, with Haslam, Ray, Dixon, you know, the championship protagonist. And he just had a great weekend. He finally put the FS3 Kawasaki where he and the team and the bike belonged. And two debut BSB podiums at Knock Hill was a very impressive way to uh, start the second half of the season because obviously a, lot, a big break uh, in that uh, BSB season for the TT and that. So to come back strong for that second part of the season is exactly what Danny Buchan and the FS3 Kazaki needed to uh, launch the attack on the showdown uh, and maybe even a championship if he uh, you know wrapped up enough podium credits. And they them two podiums definitely helped towards that. And it was good just to see Danny Buchan racing with his, his good friend Jake Dixon as well at the front. 
uh, and uh, giving each other a hard time as well for the race win. And uh, yeah, I was there, so that's just as a little bit more uh, excitement to that little uh, moment, and that's why I brought it number three in this top ten moments video. For our next moment, we take a look at the rookie in the British Superbike class for 2018, and that was Taron McKenzie, who returned, obviously, from his Moto2 uh, little duty, replacing Danny Kent uh, at the Kiefer Racing Squad throughout 2017. And McKenzie, well, what can you say? His first half of the season was, you know, typical rookie form, getting to grips with a Superbike bike, slowly chipping away at it and getting faster and faster each weekend. But we got to Brands Hatch, the second uh, visit, for Brands Hatch, but the first on the uh, full circuit, because obviously they did the Indy circuit earlier on in the year. And, well, it was just um, a little bit special, because the second return to Brands Hatch, we saw another new name get added to the front of the British Superbike grid, and that was Taryn McKenzie. He was fighting at the front in race one, unfortunately fell off, unfortunately for Taryn, um, dropped it at um, Hawthorne's, a downhill fast right-hander, uh, but race two, he, he was in P5, he finished the race in fifth position, he rode a smart race, he didn't want to throw it down again, he wanted points for his championship, because uh, obviously, you know, he was fighting for that rookie of the year, whilst uh, Gino Rea uh, was fighting, and Mason Law as well, I think, was fighting for that one, um, and it was just overall a great weekend for McKenzie, because it showed that he had the speed, it showed that the bike had the speed, uh, because also our next moment comes from the same team, at the same circuit, at the same weekend, um, but since that uh, that race at Brands Hatch, Taron McKenzie has led races, he's had pole positions, he's had front rows, he's had fastest laps, and he's had three third positions or one second position to go uh, in his 2018 season. So that is pretty impressive, and that's why it's part of our top 10 moments of British Superbikes 2018. Like I said, we're sticking at Brands Hatch for the next moment, but we're going to the other side of the garage, the Australian's Josh Brooks, who finally stood on the top step of the podium in 2018, not once, but twice. He did the double at Brands Hatch. Uh, McCann's Yamaha got a brand new engine for their two riders, which possibly helped McKenzie as well, but it definitely helped Josh Brooks, who uh, got his first podium at Snetterton this year, so he's only had one podium uh, up until uh, the wins at uh, Brands Hatch. He just got that one single third position at Snetterton, he found something with the engine, and he went on and just dominated the two races for the double. What great races there was as well. Um, eventually, Brooks just having a little bit extra in the end where he just cleared off on the last couple of laps, just saving that rear tyre. But that's what Josh Brooks needed. He needed needed that uh, double win. He needed to get back on the top step of the podium to kickstart his season off once again because it had been, like I said, a bit of a tough start to the season. Getting to grips with a McCann's bike, obviously, he was on the Anvil Yamaha last year, so he's not a switch manufacturers or anything. It's just a different run a way of running the bike, running the team, uh, and something just didn't click for the first part of the season. But that new engine, we saw the real Josh Brooks back, the Josh Brooks from 2015 when he won the championship, and he returned to the top step of the podium at Brands Hatch when he did the double. Our next moment from the 2018 BSB season comes from Peter Hickman and Thruxton. Now, Hickman had a great start to the weekend. He was top uh, of the combine practices after the uh, the first three free practices that they had. Um, but things went wrong on Saturday. He was feeling quite under the weather. He didn't have the best qualifying position. But things, it got worse. It it couldn't get worse, but it, but it did get worse. Hickman woke up in the middle of the night to be sick, I believe, uh, or go to the toilet or something. Uh, and he, he basically collapsed in his motorhome at about 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, so the ambulance was called. He was rushed to hospital where he then obviously was given medication and that he was being woken up every half an hour or 45 minutes or, you know, something like that to keep uh, checking on his condition, to keep him, his medicine going. Um, he missed the morning warm-up on Sunday, as you would expect. You would have expected him not to race at all. But Hickman, being the racer he is, he jumped back on the bike on Sunday, uh, raced. But not only did he just race, he finished second and third. He finished on the podium in both of them after having a, what was, I believe, a serious kidney infection that he'd had for a long time but wasn't treated. So to go from a hospital bed to third and second position, that is just an incredible achievement. <laughs> 
Now, after his strong start to the season, all the way back at Donington Park at the start of this video as well, Bradley Ray had a bit of a blip in the middle. He went off to Suzuka to do uh, a lot of testing, ready for the Suzuka 8-hour. He then did the Suzuka 8-hour, had an absolutely incredible weekend there. Uh, really, really good uh, result for Brad and the team. Although it went a little bit wrong when they got back to UK, Bradley Ray just didn't find that confidence with the Pirelli front tyre. He'd been running a different tyre manufacturer, I believe, at the uh, actual event of the Suzuka 8 hour, uh, and he, he just ha didn't have that same confidence with the front as what he had back in Suzuka. So that really hampered Bradley Ray's head, it messed with his performances, and it just didn't click for Bradley Ray, the two-time race winner in 2018. Eventually, though, at Cadwell Park, I don't know if it's just the circuit or what, but at the mountain course, it all clicked back in place for Bradley Ray. He put it back on the podium with two podiums in second places, two second places for Bradley Ray at Cadwell Park. And, uh, well, secured himself inside the showdown as well. I think he did that weekend and uh, was ready to rumble when it got uh, to the showdown at Alton Park, Assen and Brands Hatch. So that really gave Bradley Ray the confidence going into the last three rounds where, you know, everything was on the line. And, um, yeah, it was good to see Bradley Ray back at the, uh, the front and uh, back where he belongs on that build base Suzuki. So we go just three rounds left of the season, all the way to Alton Park, which is a track that Leon Haslam, Jake Dixon's main championship rival, has a incredible record at. He's, he's incredible around Alton Park. And when Jake Dixon turned up to dominate that weekend, it was a tricky weekend with the weather, as you can see by the images on the screen. Uh, the two races were wet, but there was some dry running throughout the, uh, the Friday and the Saturday. But Jake Dixon just turned up and dominated the weekend. He did the double in both, uh, you know, dry and wet conditions. He was quick and he, he just dominated it. And he, he took the title chant, title flight to Leon. Um, also, I think he might have affected Leon mentally because I think Leon was quite upset, quite a bit annoyed that Jake Dixon had just done that to him at Alton Park. So, yeah, I think that weekend for uh, Jake was... Not just impressive by his on-track performance, but also his off-track performance, his mentality. And that's what he's going to need when he goes to Moto2 next year. He's going to need that little bit of extra mentality, that little bit of, uh, you know, can I just affect my rivals mentally here, here or here? Then that's going to help him, I think, throughout 2019 in Moto2. But that weekend, seeing Jake just dominate the, uh, the weekend was a good moment. Uh, and that's why it deserves to be in the top 10 moments video, just because of uh, the mentality he did to Leon Haslam. And then he took the championship down right to the wire at uh, Brands Hatch. Our next moment uh, it comes from Brands Hatch. Once again, the season finale, and it's Glenn Irwin and Richard Cooper, both of them picking up a win. Glenn's on the Saturday, and Cooper, the final race of the year at uh, uh, Brands Hatch on the Sunday. Uh, now, obviously, both of these guys, they needed a result. Glenn Irwin's obviously going to JG Speedfit uh, Kawasaki for 2019. So to get a win for the Paul Bird uh, Motorsport team uh, in the final round, to finally get a win in 2018, was exactly what Glenn Irwin wanted to do. Um, however, Richard Cooper, on the other hand, he's not got a ride for next year, and he needed to put in the performance, and he did what he does best, ride well in the wet conditions, and that is exactly what both of them did. So next time, uh, next year, it's going to be uh, obviously Glenn Irwin, like I said, on that JG Speedfit bike. And he'll be looking to get more wins. Cooper, not sure yet. Obviously, he needed that win. It's his first win in BSB since uh, Alton Park 2016, where he won in tricky conditions as well. But uh, just to see both of them guys stood on the top step of the podium once again was a highlight of 2018. And that's why it is our penultimate top 10 moment of this video. So our final top 10 moment of the British Superbike season comes from Tommy Bridewell, but more in particular, his last quarter of the season. Now, Tommy started 2018 with Colin Wright's uh, Housel, Minervo, uh, Suzuki. Uh, got fired, actually, after uh, just, uh, I think, three rounds. He was going into uh, qualifying at Snetterton, and he got sacked. So basically, after a couple of uh, weeks and maybe a month or two, uh, looking for rides. He finally joined forces with Motor Rapido Ducati after Taylor McKenzie split at uh, Not Kill with the team. 
Uh, and all of a sudden, we saw the real Tommy Bridewell back. He got a front row at Cadwell Park, four podiums, and he got the best of the rest in the championship as well, winning the Riders' Cup. But it was just that final couple of, se- uh, couple of races even where he was just fighting at the front week in, week out and showed that him and, you know, the team can get podiums, can fight for wins. Um, I think the standout performance was uh, Alton Park and Brant Hatch, the final two races in tricky conditions. Bridewell just went above and beyond the expectations of what him and that bike can do. And that was just really impressive to see because if it wasn't for uh, Steve Wolf Moore's Motor Rapido Ducati team and his collaboration that he did with Tommy Bridewell, we wouldn't see Tommy Bridewell on the grid anymore. So it was good to see Bridewell back on the BSB bike and back on the BSB podium four times in 2018. And hopefully 2019 on the new Panigale V4R, we will see Bridewell back on the top step in the podium maybe he's not done that I think since Alton Park a couple of years ago it will be good to see so there we have it that is our top 10 moments of the 2018 British Superbike season quite a long video a lot of moments there throughout 2018 it was difficult to fit them in just to to pick 10 moments to put in this video but uh, yeah that's our top 10 moments what's your top 10 moments of 2018 let us know down in the comments section below hope you guys have enjoyed the video a little bit different I wasn't planning on doing this in BSB uh, but we got a comment asking for BSB and World Superbikes. So World Superbikes top 10 moments will be coming soon. Just got to think of a couple more moments and that will be coming out. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, smash that like button, hit subscribe. And I shall see you guys next time. Until then, thank you for watching and goodbye.